do we have a volunteer who wants to read all that stuff? Go for it, miss. That, that. Yeah, the notation for a limit will look like limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l. Yeah, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. So this right here, guys, notice the big difference is a little minus and plus sign. So that little minus sign means from the left. The little plus sign means from the right. So this means as x approaches from left to right, respectively, let's practice finding limits graphically and using correct notation. Okay. So uh, the graphical limits are really simple. They're probably simple enough that I could probably just give you a delta math and you'll figure it out really quick because it's that simple. Uh, but we wanted to do it the right way. So here it is. I have a graph. And that graph came from this function. Now from your Algebra 2 and Algebra 1 day, probably not Algebra 1, probably Algebra 2. So let me show you how all that came to be. Hopefully you remember. So here's f of x. Hopefully you remember the denominator is the difference of squares. So that's just x plus 3 x minus 3, and let's see, that 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 can be factored out. So you can either do guess and check, or you can do the AC method. There's only one way to get a 2x squared, 2x times x, that's the only way. And there's only one way to get a 3, well there's actually an infinite way, but at the high school level, one way, integer, integer. There's only one way to get a 3, 1 times 3. So where does the 1 go? Where does the 3 go? Well, I'm going to put a 1 here. I'm going to put a 3 there. Let's see if that one works. 2x times x, that's 2x squared. 2x times 3, that's 3x. Uh, sorry, 3 2x times x, that's 6x. 1 times x, that's 1x. The difference between 6x and 1x is 5x. There it is. We got it. So this must be a plus. This must be a minus. Does that make sense, guys? Paola, you doing okay? Ask. Tell me. You okay? If for some reason, let's say you don't like that method, it's okay. If you don't like that method, there's something called the AC method. You could have done this. You could have done 2x squared times 3, and you could have said that's 6x squared, and then you say two numbers that multiply to give you 6x squared, but that adds up to a 5x. So that is 3x and 2x. Right? That's up to, to a 5x. Bless you. Uh, did I do it right? Negative 6x squared. Uh, nope, I didn't. I need a, uh, uh, I need a, okay. Well, that does not add up to a 5x. This is the AC method. You don't have to write this down. Just listen, guys. 2x squared times negative 3. That's a negative 6x squared. So two numbers that give you negative 6x squared but add up to a 5x. That doesn't work. Uh, so let's see. What else works? Um, 6 and 1. Perfect. So you could have done this. This is called the AC method. I write 2x squared, and then I replace it with plus 6x minus x minus 3, and then you group. Group, group. What can you factor out from the first two terms? A 2 and an x, and you're left with x plus 3. And then you want it to be another x plus 3, so what do you factor out? A negative 1, and you get x plus 3. So then it looks like, check it out. What can you factor out from the products? an x plus 3, and uh, what are you left on the outside? A 2x minus 1. Why does that work? 2x times x, there's a 2x squared. 2x times 3, that's your 6x. Negative 1 times x, there's your negative x. Negative 1 times 3, there's your negative 3. Combine like terms, 6x minus x, that's a 5x. That's that expression.
So if you don't like guess and check, you could always do it by, if you go to Google and put AC method or put factoring by grouping, that will come out. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Let me erase all that. All that was algebra. The out, okay. Uh, guys, I'm not trying to scare you, I promise. Calculus, uh, I don't, okay. And I'm promising, guys, and I want to go to heaven, so. You know, calculus is easy. Cal the, the subject calculus, the topics for calculus is easy. The hard part is the algebra. And I want to go to heaven, I already told you promise. So the, the, the concepts for calculus are not going to bog you down. Like, oh, area into the curve, that has to be the accumulation of change. The, the, topic, the calculus concepts themselves are easy. It's the algebra, like, okay, how do I calculate it? That is the hard part. So calculus is not going to slow you down. It's going to be your algebra. If your algebra is strong, you'll have no problems. If your algebra is weak, that's where we're going to run into issues. Does that make sense? As you saw right now, all that was just algebra just to factor out. See, okay, which you don't need to know in the beginning, but and eventually we're going to have to be pretty beast at everything. All right, from your algebra 2 slash pre-cal days, I can tell that the x plus 3s cancel out. So that means I have a hole at x equals negative 3. If I want to know where that hole is, the y value of the hole, negative 3 comma plug in a negative 3 into what you have left. So let's see, 2 times negative 3 minus 1 over negative 3 minus 3. Negative 6 minus 1, negative 7 divided by negative 6. So the y value is 7, 6. I have a hole at negative 3, 7, 6. Hopefully you remember end behavior. End behavior for horizontal asymptote. End behavior. What are my horizontal asymptotes? Y equals, I look. Yeah, you can say it. This is x squared. That's x squared. You're looking for the highest degree. So it looks like 2x squared over x squared. So that means it has to be 2. And that's how we got this value, that value, horizontal asymptote y equals 2. We can't divide by 0. Notice you have an x minus 3 there. So x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote. You cannot cross vertical asymptotes. What's up? Oh, end behavior. I did this. Uh, you see the highest degree in the numerator is 2x squared? y equals 2x squared over the highest degree in the denominator is x squared. How do we feel? Now, by the end of the week, you will be doing graphs like with rational functions. Uh, so see if you can keep up. Don't worry, we're going to have class every day. So you don't have to do a lot of studying like at home. Uh, but make sure that if you have questions, ask. Because I can't read minds. Well, I used to, but not with the math I can't. I can tell at least one of you is really sleepy. Did you stay up all night? I'm not going to call you out, but uh, get some sleep. <laughs> All right, sorry guys, don't be mad at me. Are we good? Okay, that's how we used to, we did all that in Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal. Hopefully you remember more Algebra 2 than Pre-Cal, but that's rational functions from what we did in the beginning of Pre-Cal. All right, uh, we're good, let's continue. So we have this graph, and it wants a statement, and it wants me to write it in calculus limit notation. So here we go, let's start. As x approaches negative infinity, the graph of f of x approaches, what y value do I approach as I approach negative infinity? Two. Yeah, 2. Say it loud and proud. How does the limit notation look? Like this. Limit. You write the letter x. You put an arrowhead. You put negative infinity. You write the function, f of x, equals, you can also write the expression, and it equals 2. That's how you write it. We're doing okay so far? All right. Limit, oh, oh, sorry. As x approaches positive infinity, the graph of f of x, okay. As x approaches positive infinity, it looks like it's also approaching the value 2. So again, the same thing. Limit, as x approaches, instead of negative infinity, you're going to put positive infinity, and you're going to write f of x, and it approaches 2. Ask, what's up? Okay, so, can you explain it one more time? 
Yes. As the value of x approaches positive infinity, as I keep going way over here, I'm never going to cross. I'm going to get really, really close to that horizontal asymptote, but I'm not going to cross it. I'm not going to touch it. But I keep getting closer and closer. So what is the y value approaching? The y value is approaching 2. But it's perfect. All right. Limit as x, as x approaches negative 3 from the left. So here's negative 3. If I approach negative 3 from the left, I'm approaching this hole. But it's okay. It's okay to be a hole in this graph. Guys, the, what it, it's what the y value is approaching. That we will, so what is the y value approaching? I don't know, Chav. Look, it's right here. What is that number? Yeah. 7, 6. Because that's where my hole's at, right? Yeah, as, I, as I'm approaching. I'm approaching negative 3 from the left. So here we go. How do you write it? Limit, don't worry, it's going to get simpler. As x approaches, negative 3, but I want to say from the left, so I put a little minus sign on the upper right-hand corner of f of x equals 7, 6. Are we still okay? Ask. Yeah, yeah, check it out. The, I'm going to explain it again with the next one. Is that okay? Because it's the same. So look, the next one, it says, as x approaches negative 3 from the right. So notice that I'm going to put arrows, or look, I'm going to make it blue. You see that blue line? So as I approach the x value negative 3 on that curve, what y value am I approaching? I'm approaching this specific y value. That y value is 7, 6. Now, I'm not defined there because I have a hole, but I don't care if you're defined. It's just, what am I approaching? Does that make sense? So, what am I approaching? I'm approaching the value 7, 6. So I run to write again, 7, 6. And I'm going to write it like this. Limit as x approaches negative 3, but from the right. So what do I put on the upper right-hand corner? A plus, yeah, positive, of f of x equals 7, 6. What's up, Lopez? So if the problem doesn't specify which way you're approaching, if it does not put the plus, if it does not say positive or negative on the upper right-hand corner, that means it has to match from both sides. That's the Lindsay Lohan one. Or the limp, do you guys remember? Do you guys know who Lindsay Lohan is? Okay. Yeah, do you remember on that movie, uh, Mean Girls, that she goes, the limit does not exist. So what she's talking about is this. Well, I think it was a vertical asymptote at the time. But here's what she's talking about. If these numbers were different, the 7, 6, if one was 7, 6 and one was like 1, but I did not have a minus or a plus. Well, let's say, okay, I'll just write it right here. I don't know if it's, a, if, oh, yeah, it is. So, okay, you know what? I guess the best way to just do this is just to do the next one. So look at the next one. It says, as x approaches negative 3, the graph of f of x equals... Does it say from the left or the right? No. no. So that one just says, as I approach negative 3, you got to check. From the left and the right, do I approach the same y value? I do. I approach 7, 6. If I did not approach the same y value, so maybe this is your question. If I did not approach the same y value, you would say the limit does not exist because you're approaching two different values. Does that make sense? Perfect. Was that your question? No. Okay. What's up? A piecewise function, or uh, you know, one, maybe a vertical asymptote. Well, okay, I got to be careful because you can have the same behavior for a vertical asymptote. How are we doing, guys? We feel okay? Okay. As x approaches three from the left, the graph of f of x equals. All right, let's approach three from the left. So here I am. I'm going to put it in blue. Here's the number three. If I approach three from the left, I'm approaching, it's going down forever, negative infinity. This is actually the preferred answer. You're actually not approaching anything, so you can actually write does not exist. But I like, I like to write the behavior. So limit as x approaches three from the left of this function equals negative infinity. You could also say does not exist as well, 
because negative infinity is a behavior, it is not a number. If it's multiple choice, you will not have both of them. You will have one or the other. Are we okay? All right. As x approaches 3 from the right. Okay, let's approach 3 from the right. If I approach 3 from the right, the behavior is positive infinity. So limit as x approaches 3 from the right. You can say positive infinity, or you can say does not exist. Yes? You can say one or the other. The positive infinity or does not exist. How do we feel, guys? As x approaches 3, these don't match. Look, if I approach 3 from the right, it's infinity. If I approach 3 from the left, it's negative infinity. So th this one only has one answer. Limit as x approaches 3 of this function. Do not tell me positive infinity or negative infinity, because that's one-sided. This one, you're just going to say does not exist. DNE stands for does not exist. Oh, I think, of the Korean, did you think I was writing one? Yeah, I was like, that's one. No. The word is DNE. It does look like an O. Who else thought I was writing one? Oh, man, guys, see, I can't read minds. You got to tell me. You got to tell me. Okay, that's me turning into the Hulk, but, yeah. Was it good? Was it good? Yeah. Were you guys scared? No, yeah. So, yeah, it's DNE, guys. Does not exist. All right, so here we go. One-sided and two-sided limits. A function f of x has a limit as x approaches c if and only if the right-hand and left-hand limits at c exist and are equal. So all that means is this. I can have a continuous function. So and I'm going to say that that is some value l and this is some value c. So this is limit as x approaches c of this function is just l. Or it could be discontinuous as long as they're equal. As long as I approach the same value. This is also limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l. Now, if I have something like this, and I'm going to change the color on, on you so you know that it's not the same. So look. On this one, limit as x approaches c. Do I have a limit? I'm going to call this a. I'm going to call this one b. Check it out. I mean, I mean, let me do a side note. Limit, and the red one pertains to the red, as x approaches c from the left of f of x, and limit as x approaches c to the right of f of x. If you have colored pencils, maybe it is a good place to put colored pencils. If I approach this red graph from the left, if I approach c from the left, what's the y value I'm approaching? I'm approaching c from the left. Are approaching what y value and it's okay to be wrong yeah it's a guys always this is a safe space it's okay to be wrong no one is going to ridicule you no one if i approach c from the right so if i approach c from the right what y value am i approaching b do they match so if i approach c look at this one this one doesn't have a symbol doesn't say plus or minus so if i approach c Am I approaching the same y value? No, no so you're going to say what? The limit, does not exist. the limit does not exist. D and E. What do you guys think? Not bad, right? Oh, zoom out? Yes. Oh, I'm recording, so I'll post this up. Yes. What, this is... The only difference is this is a continuous graph. This is a discontinuous graph. 
So what I'm trying to say is it's okay to be discontinuous. The limit's still going to be the same. You know what I mean? So good question. Thank you for asking. The one on the left is continuous. That means that you can draw the graph without lifting the pencil. And then the one on the right is discontinuous. So if you were to draw that one, you would have to draw, lift the pencil, put it back down, draw. But as long as you approach the same y value, you're good. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay, guys, here we go. We have a little picture. We have a graph. Yes. Yeah, discontinuous. It could have a hole. It could have a jump. It could have a vertical asymptote. If you're approaching two different y values. Correct, because they're two different y values. What's up? Well, I, the reason why I put a hole on one and not on the other is because I, I'm assuming that I want the domain like to be part of it. You know what I mean? But it doesn't matter. I could have had two holes. Or I could have had two like solids, but then it's not a function. All right, here we go, guys. Ready for this? Letter A. On the next one, I'm going to ask you guys probably. Yeah. So this one we'll do together. And don't worry. We're going to put you guys in the spot, but don't worry. Like, I don't want your heart to elevate. It's okay to be wrong. You can use a lifeline. A lifeline. Letter A. Limit as x approaches negative 1 from what direction? The right. So look at negative 1. There's only one direction to go anyways. So negative 1 from the right, what is that y value? 1. Put a 1. Letter B. Letter B. As x approaches 1 from what direction? From It says a little minus sign, so from the, from the left. Letter B. So here it is. Neg I'm approaching 1 from the left. What's that y value? 2. Letter C. Limit as x approaches 1 from the right. What is that y value? 1. Letter D. Limit as x approaches 1. Yes. All right, guys. All right. Are we, are we okay? Yes. Yes. So letter B, you see how it says 1 from the left? That little minus sign. So that means I'm looking at the on the curve. I'm looking at as I approach 1. So here it is. I'm on the curve. I'm, X is approaching 1 from the left. And as X approaches 1 from the left, the Y value is 2. See, so that's how I put that 2 right there. So look at letter C. As X approaches 1 from the right, so I'm looking at the graph. If I approach 1 from the right, the Y value is this one right there. So what is that Y value? 1. So that's why we put that one right there. Does that make sense? Now look at this one. This one doesn't have a plus or a minus on the 1, on the upper right-hand corner. So that means if I approach from the left and I approach from the right, they have to match. Do they match? No, this one is 2, this one is 1. So they don't match. The limit does not exist. Doris, you doing good? Question yes. Um, oh, wait, no, I, the next yeah. Limit as x approaches 2. So if I approach from the left and if I approach from the right, who cares that I have a hole there? Do I still approach the same y value? So that limit is 1. So what is the reference of a hole? Yeah, we'll get to it. Don't worry. We'll get to it. Letter F. There's only one way to approach 3. You can only approach 3 from the left-hand side because there's nothing to the right. So if I approach 3 from the left-hand side, what is that y value? 1. Okay, and I'll wait for everyone to catch up. All right. Well, it might, you might, we might answer it right here. So hold on. All right, guys. Well, we all focus real quick, really fast. Letter G. Does letter G have the word limit? No. So this is just a flat-out Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 question. All this wants to know is, what is the y value when the function 
when the x value is 2 for this function. So I look for a point, 1 comma or 2 comma whatever. So 2 at 2, what is that y value? 2. It doesn't say the word limit. It wants to know what's the y value when x is 2. And yes. One's a whole. Well, it can't be. It's wherever you're defined. So wherever that value is. Okay. So at two, it's two. Okay. Yes. Okay. So for um, for uh huh. Oh yeah. There's nothing on the right hand side. So you have to put a minus three from the left. And, and it looks like this, then there would be an error on my part because there is no three from the right. There's nothing to the right. You know what I mean? You, you, it's a flat out error because the domain, it has to be within the domain. All right, here we go. Don't freak out. I'm going to ask you guys questions. I'm going to start over here and then I'm going to go towards over there. Okay, guys? All right, Ms. Abdul Karim, look at example two. The very first one says limit as x approaches 3 from the left. What is that value? Yes. Does everyone see how if you approach 3, and don't worry, I'm going to put it here. So here's my graph. As I approach 3 on this curve from the left, so that means I have to look here so you can see in red, the y value is 1. Does everyone see that? Okay. Ms. Lopez, can you help us out on the next one as I approach 3 from the right? Yes. So here it is again, guys. I'm approaching from the right. So if I approach 3 from the right, does everyone see how that number is 3? Okay. All right. Paracello. Limit as x approaches 3. Can you tell me why? Perfect. If you approach from the left, it's 1. If you approach from the right, it's 3. Does everyone see how this one does not exist as I approach 3? There are different values. If you approach different values, does not exist. Tovar, you're good? You're good? Romero, what is f of 3? Oh, yeah, so this one's undefined. That's the right word. Uh, the right word for it, guys, do not say does not exist. The right word for if it doesn't say the word limit, if it's just like f of 3, is there a point anywhere at x equals 3? So the right word is undefined because it's not there. Cool or not cool? The word does not exist is for limits. And then the word undefined is for functions. Uh, technically, you wouldn't be wrong. If this were an exam and you wrote f of 3 does not exist, I wouldn't, I'd probably put the awkward emoji and be like, okay, I wouldn't count it wrong. But, you know, that's how it is. What's up, Abdul Kareem? Um, so, if, for example, like one of them was like one of them was a little handle and open. Yeah, then that, that yeah. All right, uh, this one's a little different, so we'll do this one together and then. We'll, we'll do, I'm going to draw the sketch and then we'll call that group for the next, for example, four. So don't worry about it. This one's a little different. So let's do this one together. It says, use the graph of the function f of x shown below in order to determine all values of a for which the limit as x approaches a for this function equals zero. So what that means is this. Limit as x approaches some number, maybe from the left, maybe from the right, so I'll put number, little carrot there, of this function I want that to be zero. You guys ready? I see one right, bam, right there. So if I approach negative five from the left and the right, I see that one as approaching zero from both sides. Do you guys see that? Okay. Yeah, yes. You see how there, if I approach limit from the left and limit from the right, you see how the y value is zero? Yeah, so I think when you do delta, I think it just wants whole numbers. But I'm going to go ahead and put the, the sided ones as well. Uh, there's one more. 
Do you guys see that one at two? How how it looks like the limit from the left and the limit from the right is zero. So here's another one that is limit as x approaches two of this function is also zero. Actually, there's another one more. And there's another one where there's actually two more, but those are that's the one-sided. It's the eight one. Do you guys see how it eight from the left and from the right is zero? What's up, Paula? Okay, say that again. It has to meet up at the y value zero. The circle just means it's discontinuous. You know what I mean? So if I were to tell you what's f of 8, let me see, do they have a point anywhere? You would say undefined. But it has to meet up at the same y value, which is a zero. And it's okay if it's discontinuous. So don't worry, I see you, miss. Limit as x approaches 8 of f of x equals zero. Now there's one more. Don't worry, I see you guys. There's one more, but it's not, it's a one sided limit. It's not a two sided limit. The other one is 7, and it's only approaching from one direction. The left. So this one's probably the delta product doesn't want this one. I'm going to write it in here for you guys. Limit as x approaches 7. How do I say from the left? Minus on the upper right hand corner of this function equals 0. What's up, guys? Go middle. No, no, no. Ask. It's all good. Oh, it's a comment? Go for it. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, if you're asking where is it zero, the function itself, a negative seven, yeah, but that's not a limit. Uh, Ramirez, you had a question? Negative seven? Yeah, it's not a limit. Is that the one you're talking about? Oh, limit, it's because this doesn't apply from the right hand side. Correct. Any other questions, guys? All right. Here we go. So if I were to throw you and give you this question as a test right now, would you be able to figure it out really quick without looking at a graph? OK, hey, relax. This is a piecewise function. It is not hard. You just got to go step at a time. I'm going to show you. You guys ready? I see that my domain is all positive values, so I'm just going to sketch quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. And out to BH, let me see, 4, 5, to BH, it looks like I just need quadrant 1. So I'm just going to go, if you're wondering, Chavez, how did you do that? I looked and I go at 0, I'm at 1, at 1 I'm at 0, and then I see 1 here and 2 there, and then I looked, 3 minus 1 is 2, and then I said four, uh, negative 4 plus 5 is 1, I'm always in quadrant 1. I never go below the x-axis. Okay, and if you're wondering, Chavez, how did you do that so fast? Relax, I'm going to show you how, I how you can do this really slow. The first piece, you draw a line. What line do you draw? You draw the line negative x plus 1 between 0 and 1, but at 1 you put a hole. So with a y-intercept of 1 and go down 1, right 1, right? So here it is. I'm going to put the y-intercept of 1. I'm going to say 1's right here. I'm going to go down one, right one. So I'm going to say right there, and that's not a, I made a solid. It should be a hole. Uh, let me change the colors. And a hole. And I connect it. Does everyone see how I got that? Yes. I just did the line negative x plus 1. I did my y-intercept, and I made a slope of negative 1. And that's it. That's all you're doing. That's this one. Everyone know why there's a hole and not a solid, right? Yeah, because there's not an equal sign right here. Now, look what the next one is. Th this says that y equals 1 between 1 and 2, for x equals 1 and 2. So I'm going to draw a line, y equals 1, between the x values 1 and 2. Does that make sense to everyone? At 1, you make a solid. At 2, you make a hole. So I'm going to say this is 1 again. So here it is. At 1, solid. And you're just going to make a line until you hit 2. And at 2, you make a hole. Paola, what do you think? Ask me, miss. Ask. It's all good. Okay. Uh, well, I want you to understand. So let me slow down. 
So these are all functions. These are all like, a, okay, so imagine them separate. y equals negative x plus 1, y equals 1, y equals 2, y equals x minus 1, y equals negative x plus 5. These are all just that. If someone told you y equals 1, that's just a horizontal line. That 1, right? But I don't want that horizontal line forever. I want that horizontal line only between 1 and 2. You see that? So what about this one, negative x plus 1? Okay, well, that's just a linear line, negative x plus 1, that goes something like that. But I don't want it for the entire domain. I want it just between 0 and 1. The next one's just a point, yeah. Because at x equals 2, the y value is 2. So that's just a point. That's not a line. Do you see that? So the next one, guys, 2 comma 2. So here's 2. I'm going to erase all this stuff here. Oh, man. <laughs> I erased my uh, y-axis. There we go. So the next one, 2 comma 2, is just a point. 2, 2. There's my point. Are we okay? All right. Here we go. You ready for the next one? Here's how you do it, guys. I already know it's a linear line. If you want, you could have gone from y-intercept of negative 1 and then go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, and then start at 2 and then end at 3. You can do that if you want, but you're making life hard. So here's how you do it. When x is 2, what is the y value for this one that I'm circling? Well, what is 2 minus 1? So I'm right here. Don't, don't make it a solid. Just make it an open circle still. And when x is 3, that one's going to be solid. When x is 3, what is the y value? 3 minus 1 is 2. So go to 3 and put a y value of 2, and that one is a solid. And connect them. Do you see how we did it? Connect them because it's a linear line. Okay. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. Here we go. When x is 3, I'm in the last one right here. So this says negative x plus 5. So that means negative 3 plus 5, that is 2. So I'm going to be coming out of the one that I just did. And it's okay that it's a solid because it was a solid on the last one. Like Chavez, but it says open circle. Well, yeah, that means it's not defined at 3 for that one, but it is for the other one. And then when I'm at 4, negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So put a point at 4, 1. It's a linear line. That slope should look the same as the slope from the very first line that you had. Mine kind of looks a little off, but that's okay. What's up, Gonzalez? Hit me. Okay. I just forgot that I have to... Submit attendance, but they haven't called me, so we're okay. So as long as they haven't called me. <laughs> oh my God. Are we still okay, guys? Okay. Here we go. Oh, yeah, ask, please. Why at the what? Say it again. Oh, uh, why do I stop at four? Because this one stops at 4. Like, if I had more functions, then I would continue. You know what I mean? Uh, what one? Show me which one. Yeah, negative 4 plus 5. That's why I stopped. What, I'm confused. I don't know Alright, here we go. 
We're going to start at Valencia. Don't worry, it's okay. So let's look at letter B. Can you read what that means? The very first one, that one right there. Limit. Perfect. Yeah, good job. Does everyone see how this limit is one, guys? All right. Yes. So here's the value is zero, right? So if I approach zero from the left, from the right hand side, so here I am on the curve. If I approach zero from the right hand side, what is that y value? One. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. All right, Cervera, can you read that statement and uh, for us, and then tell us what that answer is? I can't, I can't hear you. I'm sorry, miss. Perfect. Is what? Perfect. Good job, miss. So here it is, guys. If I approach one from the left, the y value I'm approaching is zero. Does that make sense? All right. Tovar, can you hook us up with this? No, yes, you can. And it's okay, miss. It's okay if we're wrong. No one's going to judge you, I promise. So let's, let's first read that statement. So we start by saying the word, say limit. Perfect. And what do you think that is? Yeah, it is. So let, good job, Tovar. So here, check it out, guys. Limit as x approaches 1 from the right. So here it is. I'm on the curve. You're looking at the x value. As I approach 1 from the right, so here I am. I'm writing it in green. As I approach 1 from the right, what is this y value? What's that y value? 1, yeah. Do you guys see that? Tovar, you see that? Okay, please ask me, miss, because I can't read your mind. Good job. All right, Torres, read that statement for us. Perfect. Can you tell me why it does not exist? So when I approach from the right, it is 1. If I approach from the left, it is and because they don't match, you're going to say, good job. Good job, miss. All right. Gonzalez, you ready for the next one? Can you say, can you say what this is first and then tell me the value? Tell us the value. What do you think it is? Yeah, good job. If I approach 2 from the left, the y value is 1. Cool, good job, miss. Avaris, you want to tell us the next one? What it says, what that says first, and then the value? Perfect, good job. Paola? Do you want to tell us what that means and what the value is, if it has a value? Good job. Why is it one? From the left and from the right. They meet up. Beautiful. See, guys, we got this. Limit as x approaches three from the left is two. As you get closer and closer to three from the left, the y value is two. Limit, as, and by the way, slow me down if I'm going too fast. Limit as x approaches 3 from the right is also 2. So because they both match, do I ask for the 3? Yeah. Because they both match, what is the limit as x approaches 3? Good job. Limit as x approaches 4 from the left. That's the only direction you can go. There is no right. So if I approach 4 from the left, what is that y value? 1. 
And then finally, does this one say the word limit? No, it just says f of 2. So I'm going to go and I'm going to look for where this function is defined at 2. What is that value? 2. Do you see how we did it, guys? All right. Do you guys want to see, and don't worry, we're, we're going to do it together eventually. Do you guys want to see if you can figure out this one? Give you guys about two minutes, see if you guys can figure it out. Yeah, you can draw it or not, however you like. The x squared plus 1 is just a parabola, guys. Vertex at 0, 1. Here's how the graph looks if you're wondering. Take about 30 seconds. I'll show you in a little bit that you don't have to draw it. I'll show you in a little bit how you would do it. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess. Um, yeah. Okay. 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 Don't worry, guys. I'll show you a hack. Okay. Looking at the graph. So show me, or how would I write it? So, so tell, what is the, first of all, let's answer this question and then we'll see how to write it. What is the limit of f of x as x approaches 2? So what is that limit? It's a number. What number is it? 5. Does everyone agree that the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is 5? Okay, now tell me how I would write this. What do I write? Limit, L-I-M. X, where do I put the X? On the bottom, on the, on the bottom, and then I put a arrowhead or arrow to a two, perfect. And then, perfect. All right, do you want to see the hack on how you could have answered this without drawing? You say yourself, you say yourself this, you say yourself, you say to yourself, limit as X approaches two from the left of this function. Now, without seeing, without looking at this, if I'm approaching 2 from the left, I have to focus on this one. Because 2 from the left is like 1.9, 1.8, 1.7. And that domain falls between the negative 2 and 2. Do you guys see that? So if I approach negative 2 from the left, I look at the x squared plus 1. 
I plug it in. 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. So I do that. And then I'm going to say, okay, what's the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? And then I go, okay, if I'm approaching from the right, and I should probably color code it. So here I am color coding it. If I'm approaching from the right, I'm probably going to look at this one. Why? Because if I'm approaching from the right, I'm talking about numbers bigger than 2, like 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Does that make sense? Okay, well, if I approach from the right, look at that y value. What y value am I approaching? 5. Do they both match? So the limit must be 5. Does that make sense, guys? What's up? Yeah, to the left of two. Okay. Don't say yeah. And then for the second one, you want the value So I have to look at the, the third one here between two and eight. Look at the, the interval. Yeah. Oh, it's How do we feel? No. All right. So let me go ahead and stop this recording. Don't worry. I'm going to place it. Oh, that's for attendance. Yes, ma'am. Can you please uh, post the question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I will.